So now when you know what not to expect from this video and you have your expectations right, you know what you should expect, let's begin. Okay, so before I tell you how you can actually improve your CRS score, let me tell you what is CRS and this is for all those people who are very new to this express entry concept. So CRS is basically comprehensive ranking system and it is a points based system that Canadian government uses to assess and score your profile and rank you in the express entry pool. So once you create your profile, you are given certain amount of score and that score is based on few factors. So it's not like any uh, score is given to you, any random score is given to you, your score, your profile is actually ranked uh, based on your score and that score is actually based on a few factors. Now, which are those factors? I've listed out few important factors over here. So uh, number one, your age. Number two, it would be your level of education. Number three, it would be language proficiency. Then it would be your work experience, maybe in Canada or outside Canada. After that, it would be spousal factors. Now we'll, we're going to discuss all of these one by one. So don't worry about it. The next one would be siblings in Canada. After that, arranged employment and the last one would be PNP nomination. These are the most important eight factors that I've listed over here. Now there are you no know, other small factors as well and we will discuss it going through in the video. Okay, so how you can actually improve the score? If you can improve any one of these factors, then obviously your score will improve a bit or maybe in a couple of these factors, your score can actually improve drastically. So let's discuss what all possibilities are there. Okay, so now let's discuss the first factor, which is your age. Of course, we are only getting older day by day, right? I just hope that anyone could make a pill or a medicine which could actually make us younger. But for now, until we don't have that medicine, the express entry system is actually designed in a way that it would give more points to younger people. However, it would give less points to older people. Now, what do I mean by younger and older? It actually gives, you know, until 29 years of age, it would give you a certain number of points. I think it's 100 points if you are uh, married and uh, 110 if you're not married. And after that, your score would actually decrease by five points approximately every year. So of course there's nothing much that we can do about it but what we can do is that we should not waste any time and should not procrastinate things. If you are actually 25, 26, yes you have got a couple of years but yes if you are actually 29 even you should not procrastinate. You should go for the express entry system straight away if you actually want to immigrate to Canada. Okay, not wasting much time on the age factor. Let's come on to the next factor, which is education. So the least number of points are awarded if you have a diploma. After that, if you have a bachelor's degree, then if you have two or more diploma or degrees, then masters and the highest number of points are awarded to the doctorate. Okay, so let's suppose that you are there in your early 400s, like 420, 430, and you want to cross the current cutoff CRS which is actually for 50 or maybe even for 40. Hopefully it might go down in the near future. So if you want to actually cross that barrier, then yes, education can play a very important role over here. Let's suppose you have a bachelor's degree. If you can get uh, one more diploma or one more degree, then your points would increase drastically. So now some might say that, why would I do that? Why would I actually go to college once again and get one more degree just to increase your points. This is a life changing thing for you guys. So this is definitely an option and trust me, many people do it. Express entry is not going to end anytime soon. So if you think that, you know, one after one year, if I go for any degree or diploma after one year, what will be, what will happen? Uh, what if some rule change? Yes, that can happen. But yes, express entry is not going anywhere. Their plans have been declared until 2021. Express entry is gonna stay for at least three more years and even after that. Now, I know many people would ask the same old question that uh, which degree can I give a list of uh, those degrees and diplomas which are accepted by WES. I'm really sorry, I don't have such a list. If I get such a list, I will definitely provide it to you. 
So, okay, the, this was about the education. Next is the language proficiency. Now, I've mentioned the IELTS, the TEF, and CELPIP over here. These are the three tests which we have to pass. Actually, one of the three, actually one of these three, IELTS and CELPIP is for English and TEF is for French. Now they have started accepting TCF as well, but I'm sure most of my audience is interested only in IELTS or some in CELPIP as well. So if we look at the scorecard over here, the, we know that this is a magical trick. If you actually score CLB8, in that case, you would score very less points. And if you score CLB9, in that case, there would be a drastic increase in your score. And the same case would be with cell pip as well. So you can see over here, if you score 9999 in each of the four different aspects, in that case, you would definitely score very good points. Having said all of this, if you have done your IELTS, if you if even you have got CLB9, you're still not able to score it, go for CLB10, do little more practice, and I'm sure you'll be able to crack CLB10. Now, I know you would say that talking and motivating about CLB10 is easy, but actually scoring is very, very tough. And I do agree with you, but we haven't got many options, right? But yes, we do have another option. If you don't want to prepare for CLB10, you can prepare for French language as well. So if you give two tests, your points get increased drastically. If you have French as your second language, your points would definitely increase. So if you have IELTS as the first or cell paper as the first, and or TEF as the second language test or TCF as the second language test, in that case, you would score very good points. So let's now talk about the next very important factor, which is the work experience. Of course, this counts the Canadian work experience and your work experience outside Canada. Anywhere outside Canada is outside Canada. Even the US is considered as outside Canada. So if you have a Canadian work experience, it would actually do wonders to your profile. But if not, even then you would get certain number of points. So to be eligible for the express entry system, you should have minimum of one years of experience. If you have two years of experience, you would get even more points. And if you have three years of experience, you would get the maximum number of points. So let's suppose that if you have one and a half years of experience, it is definitely recommended to wait for a few months so that you score more points when you complete two years of work experience. If you have two and a half years of experience or somewhere between two to three years of work experience, then in that case, you should definitely wait three more months so that you can score maximum number of points in the work experience factor list. Okay, so this was about the work experience. You should definitely consider waiting for a few more months if you haven't completed your three years of work experience. Okay, so now let's talk about the next very important factor, which is the spousal factor. So this is something which many people ignore. You can score 40 additional points if you can do good with the spousal factors. So this can definitely do wonders to your express entry profile. I've listed out four different points over here. There are four different scenarios, which I suppose need to be considered. Let's say that there is Mr. X and Mrs. Y. They're both husband and wife. Mr. X is the primary applicant. But if in case Mrs. Y has got a better degree like a master's or a doctorate degree, they should actually consider making Mrs. Y as the primary applicant because in that case they would score more points. Let's say that Mrs. Y has actually scored CLB 10 in IELTS. In, even in that case, they should consider making Mrs. Y as the primary applicant. Let's say both of them actually have bachelor's degree and, uh, and Mrs. Y know more about French. If she can clear and score good points in TEF exam, in that case, she, if she becomes the primary applicant, then their profile would have much better score. Let's say if Mr. X is 36 years of age and Mrs. Y is actually 30 years of age. So there would be a lot many points if Mrs. Y actually becomes the primary applicant, their profile would become a lot better. So these all are the factors which you should consider making your spouse as the primary applicant if she scores good in any of the other factors. Right, so moving on to the next very important factor. Let's say Mr. X is the primary applicant. They both have the bachelor's degree. And because Mr. X was the primary applicant, he paid much more attention to the IELTS exam and uh, scored CLB9. But because Mrs. Y was the secondary applicant, she didn't pay much attention 
to the IELTS exam and she scored like CLB 6, CLB 7. In that case, if she could score CLB 9, even that would add a lot many points to your profile. So please consider this point as well. If your spouse is at CLB 7 or CLB 8, if she could score CLB 9, even that would add few points to your profile. And you never know, you could cross that boundary and that could get you an ITA. So the next point to consider is applying the PR through the experience entry system without your spouse, that is your spouse not accompanying you. Yes, that can definitely happen. You can say that um, my wife is not interested in getting the PR right now because of uh, maybe her career, maybe the fact that she is pregnant at the moment, maybe because of the fact that uh, we have a small child who was just born one year ago. I mean, there can be many factors depending on depending from one case to the other. But yes, if your wife hasn't got a very good degree, if she hasn't scored very good in IELTS or you no know, other language proficiency test, then you could definitely consider applying alone. But you should be ready with a very good and justified answer why your wife is not accompanying you. If you're able to justify that to the immigration officer, you're good to go. And maybe you could score something around 450 or you know even more and you would definitely get the ITA. Okay, so this was the third point. Now let's talk about the last point. Let's say that you have a score of something around 448, 449 or 450 and your marriage is lined up maybe in a couple of months. In that case, it would definitely be beneficial if you actually postpone your marriage for a few months because if you get married in the meanwhile, you, even if you get the ITA, your score will drop. It is definitely not recommended to hide any of the changes in your marital status from the IRCC. You should definitely tell them as soon as it happens. So even if you have got the ITA and you get married after that, it would reduce your points. So please take a very special note of that. And of course, there can be another factor as well. If your fiance has got a master's or PhD degree or she speaks very good French, then maybe you can pre-pone your wedding and she can become the primary applicant and you would score many more points. Okay, so moving on to the next point, which is sibling in Canada. You would score 15 bonus points if your sibling is a permanent resident or a citizen of Canada. By sibling, I mean not a cousin brother or a cousin sister. You should be able to prove that he or she is your real brother or a real sister. So this was another point. Moving on to the second last point, which is the arranged employment. I know this is something which we have talked a lot about. It's very difficult to get an arranged employment. So what is an arranged employment actually? You should be able to get a job offer and that job offer should be approved by LMIA. This is something which is very difficult to get. I know so I won't put too much stress on this factor over here because you cannot do much about it. You can only try but it's very difficult to get a job. You would score 50 more points if you can get an LMI approved job offer, but scoring this is almost impossible. I'm not saying that it is totally impossible. Yes, some people do get it, but yes, there's a very less chance of getting an arranged employment, getting an LMI approved job offer when you're outside Canada, but you would score 50 points if you could arrange one. Moving on to the last point is the PNP nomination. Now, Many of us know about it. I will provide a link in the description box if you don't know about the provincial nomination program. All of the different provinces of uh, Canada, they do have their own provincial nomination program. So if you can get a provincial nomination from any one of these provinces, in that case, 600 points would be added to your CRS score and you would get ITA in the very next draw. If you have questions about the PNP program, there are many videos that I've made. You can go back to my channel videos and watch all of them. I would not elongate this video too long. I know it has already been a long video. So I would just mark this point and end this video. So you definitely score 600 points if you can get one PNP nomination from any of these provinces. So thank you guys. This was it from my side. This was probably all of the factors that I've covered in this video, how you can actually increase your CRS score. If you think that there's any other factor which I've missed, please comment down below. I would definitely pin your comment so that it is visible to other people as well. So thank you guys for watching this video. I just hope that you like the content shared in this video. If yes, please click the thumbs up button. If no, click the thumbs down button.
If you think it would be helpful for your friends, please share it with your friends. And of course, if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please click that subscribe button before moving on to the next video. Thanks again.